Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Sean Gribbins. I'm a local Denver investor slash real estate agent. I'm also a big fix and flipper, hence the name of my YouTube channel name, Flipping with Sean. Um, if you have interest in flipping houses, check out my channel a little bit more. I've got a lot of videos on that. But today I'm going to talk to you about uh, this spreadsheet that I put together um, to help analyze my Airbnb um you know, properties and some of my properties are unique where I've got an Airbnb in one of the lower units and then I've got, you know, a uh, long-term rental upstairs or vice versa. And so this sheet's able to do both or just uh, short-term instead of long-term um, or you can just do long-term. I mean, this sheet's pretty in-depth, so I'm just going to walk you guys through how to use it all. It's really uh, pretty simple here. And if you have any questions or you have any issues with the spreadsheet, you can email me here. Um, if you want to download it, I'll have a link in the box below. It's on my website. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to give me any information. You can easily download it. Um, I'm just trying to get it out there and get people using it to get some feedback on it. So anyways, guys, we'll go ahead and just get right into it. Um, any of the yellow boxes here on the first page and you can see the pages down here I'm in Google Sheets Excel is gonna be really similar um, it will work in Excel it'll work in Google Sheets whatever you prefer um, so all the yellow boxes here you're gonna see are uh, boxes that you can input and so um, just to kind of show how this is working I've actually got um, another deal here um, in Scottsdale that I just pulled up that um, I was just kind of browsing and I thought, oh, this may be a good deal. Um, it's 430, three bed, three bath, a little over 1,500 square feet. You can see I've got um, all the costs plugged in here if you were to put 20% down on the property. And um, I've even got the monthly utilities, internet and TV, that sort of thing. That way I can kind of get um, a full number here on what the total cost per month is going to be. So um, we can get started and start plugging in some numbers. In order to determine the income for this, um, I've got an Air DNA subscription. So you can see here, I just plugged it in. I don't own this zip code in Air DNA, but super amazing tool to use to comp um, properties. It works really well, and um, I love it. So, anyways, you can see Air DNA thinks it'll make about fifty thousand dollars a year average daily rate of $324 and just so you guys know average daily rate um, is not only the rate that you're getting nightly so the nightly rate for the property but it's also the total income that you're getting from the guests including the cleaning fee so um, you can assume you know for a three night stay or four night stay you know they're paying 324 a night but the nightly price may actually be 300 or 299 or something like that and this $24 would add up over the 3 days and you know break down into the cleaning fee cost so that's just something to keep in mind um Airbnb is good in fact they take out most taxes for you you just got to double check and make sure that they're paying them all um and then you can see here that it's occupied 42% of the time out of the year so overall, that's not bad. Um, I like to see this number a little bit higher, you know, just to show the area is a little bit better. But since the revenue is so high, it makes this deal um, look like it may uh, be actually pretty good. So without further ado, guys, we'll go ahead and start entering in some information. So the first page is kind of the basics. Um, the total purchase price, they've got it listed for 430000 so we'll plug in 430 Closing costs. Um, you can see here that uh, you're able to enter in the closing costs, but they're also just calculated um, by multiplying a couple cells here in terms of, you know, it calculates in the concessions paid. If you don't know what concessions are, it's basically just deducting money off of certain items that you owe at closing. Um, and so we're going to say there's no concessions paid. This closing cost is just a general estimate here. And the down payment percentage amount is going to be 20%. So we'll plug that in there. And you can see now down payment wise, we need $86,000. Loan term 30 years. Uh, you can see it breaks down the months for you here. The annual percentage rate right here 
and we've got that at 3.5, which is a little bit higher than the market right now, but we'll leave it there. That's a good number. And then property taxes, we'll come back here, and we need to find our property taxes. And Zillow is not super friendly with the property tax information, so we got to find it. I see tax year here. I don't see, okay, here we go. 2185 is the annual tax assessment. So we'll plug in 2185, click enter, just like that. And then this is kind of a cool little option right here, guys, your cash out refi. Um, it'll tell you uh, at what portion you can um, cash out refi and pull money out to buy another property if you're using the burn method or whatever you plan to do. So I'm going to leave that at 75%. Now we're going to come to the bottom here and we're going to click the next page, the income and expenses page. And we're just going to keep going here. So Airbnb monthly, um, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the $50,000 here. And this is how I'm going to do it. We're going to do one, two, three. And we're just going to divide that by 12 because we got 12 months. And you can see 4166. I'm not going to give it any crazy numbers. We're all going to have round numbers here. So 4166, there'll be no long term and no additional money coming in. And then the mortgage payment, um, whoops, you can see the mortgage payment's already been calculated for us. Um, and you can see on the amortization chart here, it's plugged in all our information, the loan amount, um, the interest rate, and then you can see it's automatically calculated. So if you plug in the close date here, you can pick the close date and say it's December 31st of 2020. Well, your first, uh, you know, payment basically is going to be nothing. You just bought the house and then first payment right here, you can see your monthly payment. Um, if we open this up a little bit here, whoops, you can see how much you're paying in interest and principal and then the loan balance amount. And it'll do, if you scroll all the way down here, you can see until the loan's paid off in, what is that, uh, January 3rd of 2051 for this property. So that's pretty cool. So we'll come back here. So since it's calculated this, um, we will plug in our insurance numbers here. And insurance is usually, for a house this price, about $1,600. Um, maintenance yearly, I'll keep at it $1,500 just for random stuff. Uh, the maid service, the way I like to figure this out is find out what you're going to charge for a cleaning fee. And then if you figure you've got about four weeks in a month and this property is occupied at two out of those four weeks on average, about 50%, I can imagine that that is at most four cleanings. So we'll do four times 75 That's $300. So now I'll plug in $300 right here. And then you can see I've got my electrical and gas plugged in here. This number is actually going to be $150. I've got my water plugged in here. I've got my sewer plugged in here. I've got TV and internet plugged in and trash. So really everything that you could think of, um, you've got access to change in here. The only one that you can't change is the mortgage payment one. Um, and then you can see down here, it'll basically break down your costs. Okay, here's your monthly expenses, $25.41. Here's your monthly income. Here's your total yearly income, and then your yearly expenses costs. So now that we've got that, we can come into this page, and now we can say, well, we've got to furnish the property. So let me just come through and quickly delete these columns. Just real quick. So you can see, um, since the property is a three bed, right? Three bed. You can see there's no furniture here, so looks like we've got, you know, a living room. Um, you can see a living room here, a dining room. So we're going to need some furniture, right? Um, in fact, we're going to need quite a bit of furniture. So bed sheets, um, I always like to buy at least two sheets, uh, two sets per, um, you know, mattress. So we'll have three mattresses in the house, so that's going to be six sheets. And um, I'm just going to get normal ones for this one, and then we'll need six duvets. Um, comforter wise, I'm not going to get any of those bath sets since there's three bathrooms here. We're basically going to get, um, I like to just stack up on these. So I'm going to get 12 of these. 
We'll get uh, six bath shower mats. We'll get another 12 hand towels, another 12, whoops, washcloths. And then we'll probably get uh, three blankets. And then we're going to need a pretty big couch, so we'll get one of those. Um, we'll need a coffee table. We'll need probably uh, three TVs. I like to do a couple in each room. Um, side table, we'll get two of those for the couch. Um, we'll get a nice dinner table. We'll get uh, two seats. And then we'll probably get like eight pictures. We'll get five rugs. I'm just going through pretty quickly here, guys. I've done this a few times. So you can see basically how we can just go through easily and get everything that we need and really just get to the point where we're going to um, be able to get you know all our returns and calculate our startup costs. So that's what's so cool about this spreadsheet is you can easily just go through and you know calculate everything you need. So see right here, I'm going to calculate all my stuff that we need for the cleaners. So you can see, again, we're just going through and I'm stocking up, right? Because I don't want to have... Um, to have to replace anything especially if I'm out of town since I live in Denver for this one and we're just gonna go through again real quick okay so now you can see the totals for everything and then you can see our grand totals broken down right here We've got a contingency budget we can add to, so if we want to, you know, add some additional items or just make sure we've got enough room there um, to cover taxes and that sort of thing. And then if you have any other thing that you'd like, uh, you can customize it in here. You can put in some fill-ins um, or you can just put in numbers. If you've got your numbers calculated on other stuff, you can plug it in right there and it will add it to these totals here and eventually to the grand total. So now that we've got all of our information plugged in from our property information page, our income and expenses page, and our furniture and repairs estimators page, now we can go to our returns page. And this is what's really cool about this spreadsheet is we can come in here and see all of our returns and see if this makes sense to us. So um, total money out of pocket to buy the place, we're looking at $108,000. You can see all of our um, costs right here. Okay, and basically, um, we'll go through here. Uh, we've got our holding costs. We've got our income after taxes and before, ex uh, excuse me, after expenses and before taxes. So you can see our yearly income on this property becomes $26,000, which is not bad. Uh, $26,000, I mean, we'll see the returns here in a second, but you know, if you're putting $108,000 down, you're getting $26,000 back a year. That's pretty good. Plus, you know, realistically, we'll look more, but you're paying down the property too. So return on investment, assuming purchase price is current with the market value. So say you own it for five years and you get the cash flow of $26,000 a year, and then you sell it in five years. Um, here's how much money you would have. Um made from the property after five years. So that's 121% um, percent on your investment. So not too bad, right? Not too bad. 10-year um, return, things really start um, building up 30-year return. And you can see the cash flow here before taxes. Cash on cash return is 23.95%. Um, that's pretty amazing. You know, you're getting basically almost 2% a month um, which is pretty cool. So then your ROI with the property appreciation and you can come in and you can change this number, right? So if you want the, you know, if you think the market's going to gain 6%, look, I mean, look at these numbers, how they change. Um, you can see after five years, if you had 6% appreciation yearly, you know, you would have $364,000 and your cash flow returns, you know, at 7%. If the cash flow gains, so if you know you get seven percent more income every year 
Um, you can see here, second year, you know, um, basically things are going up. So it's just kind of an interesting equation where you can um, easily calculate how much money you're getting, you know, and determine if the deal is going to be right or not. So um, you can also check here, you know, on your amortization chart and just see, you know, after uh, 12 months, you know, I'm only going to owe 337. So it just helps you guys kind of calculate uh, a lot with the properties. And I hope you like it. I hope you get some good use out of it. If you have any questions or any issues with it, anything that you notice I missed or maybe that's messed up, please get in touch with me um, at the email right here below or comment below this video. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.